this is Gemma Smith with All Things Real Estate, and I am your host. We are in a segmentation called Estate Planning, and with us is our esteemed Esquire, Maggie from Litheran Kennedy and Associates. Now, if you have joined us in the last few segments, you know how dynamic, how informative she is. I mean, I'm taking notes as she's talking, so I know you're going to enjoy this segmentation. Um, we are talking about uh, the joint tenancy versus community property. So can you further discuss what that means to most folks who are married? Yes, that's right. So again, thank you for having me. Um, so I thought it would be a good thing to talk about, um, especially with Gemma with uh, real estate. This is only for married couples. So if you're not married, this is just a nugget you get to impress all your friends with and your family members. So if you're married, a lot of times when you purchase real property, you are you are asked, how do you want to hold title? And you, you may not know the answer to that. Well, how does everyone else hold title? Well, usually you hear joint tenancy, right? We're holding a uh, title as husband and wife as joint tenants. The other alternative is holding it as community property. Now, ideally, I would say you need to have a trust, right? Hold it in the trust, but some people don't have a trust. So if you haven't seen me yet, then your options are going to be joint tenants or community property. And there is a big tax difference when you hold one or the other. So I thought I would do an example. So um, let's imagine that my husband and I purchased a home many years ago for $100,000. And over our lifetimes, the house is appreciated in value. And now it's worth a million dollars. And my husband has passed away. Sorry, sorry, honey. So he's passed away. But this property was really his property. It was his rental. Like I had nothing to do with it. It was all about him. And I don't want to deal with it now that he's gone. So I've decided to talk to Gemma. We're going to sell it. If I sell it after he's passed away, there's a capital gains tax I would have to pay on the appreciation between the 100,000 we bought it for and the million dollars. So if we hold it as joint tenants, half of the appreciation just disappears, right? It's my rental and half of it disappears and that's not bad. So I would only have to pay taxes on the difference. If we had decided to hold the property, this rental property as community property, 100% of that gain is eliminated after he passes away. So I sell it the very next day, he's gone, I've sold the property. I have zero taxes to pay on any of that appreciation at 900,000 completely eliminated, no taxes to me. So I wanted to talk about how important it is when you're making these big purchases to have somebody who understands the differences between the titling because they do have big tax consequences. So, um, holding everything in community property is one of the many benefits or few benefits of being married in the state of California, depending on how you look at it. Now, let me ask, if it's a, um, a couple, you know, had it in as a joint, ten, um, joint tenants, but then realize they should hold it in community property. Um, is that an action they can actually do? Can they change the, how they hold title to a property? Absolutely. So if you're sitting here thinking, oh my gosh, I did it. I, I'm holding it as joint tenancy. You can create a new deed transferring it to yourselves as community property. If you get a trust, like our office, many attorneys do, we do a community property agreement that says, no matter how we previously titled our, our any of our assets, uh, we're now treating it as community property. So it's a big catch-all. It says everything should be treated as community property. So that's another way of doing it. You, you do a document that says, now we're treating it as community property. Ignore that it said joint tenancy. Okay. And I know this no. is another question, but um, at our webinar that we're hosting on March the 18th at eight, um, six o'clock. So do register for that webinar so you can ask Maggie all these questions all that these you're questions. writing down. Um, just real briefly, because we talked about it, the scenario with you and your husband um, holding joint tenants versus community property. And this was a property of his. Now, is it applicable to the same for uh, a primary residence or is a rental treated differently or in that scenario when it's, you call your whole title? It's all property. So I picked the rental property because that's the one I would probably sell if he passed away. But it's all property, whether it's your primary residence, a rental, commercial building, like whatever the property is. Very good. Well, you know, this is great information. I know that a lot of the folks that I work with and in contact with always have these kind of questions and may not always have the resources or the, you know, the knowledge of how to make the best decisions. So that's when working with someone like yourself, Maggie, 
really comes into play to make sure that your estate is in order on all aspects. So folks, if you have enjoyed listening to Maggie, you're going to really enjoy our webinar on March uh, the 18th. So don't miss that. But as always, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out either by email or by phone number. I'll definitely connect with Maggie as well. So as always, stay healthy, stay safe, and we'll see you in our next segmentation. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you.